Hello, everyone. The story I'm going to share today is "Where Did Shishu of the Three Kingdoms Go?" Shishu, also named Yuanzhi, served as counselor for Liu Bei at the final period of Eastern Han Dynasty, and later went to serve Cao Cao. At that time, he was highly respected and was granted a high position. He was indeed a veritable court minister. From then on, there was no records of him in the books of Chinese history, but his name could be found in folklore and literature notes. I would like to share the following legendary story with you. According to the Wang Yuan County Annals of the Republic of China, Xu Shu later resigned and lived in the seclusion in Badai Mountain, located in the hinterland of Daba Mountain. He collected herbs to help the local people. Later, he became an immortal, and people called him Master Hua Er. In the 13th year of Emperor Kangxi of the Qing Dynasty, there was a soldier named Ding Yuying in the army led by General Zhu Hai. One time during a journey, there was a storm, and Ding Yuying lost contact with the army. At night, he strayed into a valley and lost his way. So he rode his horse around in the same place. At about midnight, he guessed that he wouldn't be able to find his way and get up that night. So he dismounted the horse and leaned against the tree to rest and to wait until dawn. At this time, he saw red light coming slowly from a distance. When he got closer, he saw that it was an old man. With a beard and eyebrow as if painted, his clothes were not what people wore at that time. The old man said to Ding Yuying, "Are you lost?" Ding said, "Yes. Please show me the way out." The old man said, "This mountain is very remote, and tigers and wolves are everywhere. It's about fifty miles away from the main road. Come with me, and I will take you out." Then the old man walked in the front. Ding followed behind on horseback. Although there were bits of jungles and ravines on the path, the old man walked as if flying, and Ding could hardly keep up with him on horseback. Soon they reached a flat place. The old man stopped and handed the lamp to Ding and said, "Take the lamp with you. The main road is not far away from here." Ding Yuying looked at the lamp. It was not made of wood or cotton yarn, and it was red and round. Feeling very strange in his heart, he asked the old man's name. The old man said, "I'm a Shi Shu from the Three Kingdoms period." Upon hearing this, Ding Yuying opened his mouth wide in surprise, and just as he was about to thank him, the old man had disappeared. Ding Yuying walked. For a few more miles, and came to the main road. It was dawn, and light went out. Upon having closer look, it turned out that the lamp was a red apricot as big as a bowl. Ding Yuying returned to the army and told about his adventure. Everyone said that it was a cold winter, and there couldn't be an apricot, especially not that big. So they all believed that Ding Yuying really had met Shi Shu. In the records of whose annals, Shi Shu was also mentioned several times. There is an island in the northeast sea of Lingshan called Guoziyang. On the island, a white winter flower named Camellia japonica grows, as big as a closed hand. A man was very curious. And went to pick this flower. When about to return, he met an old man riding a boat. The old man was wearing sandals and robes, like an ancient man. The old man asked him, "Where are you going?" The man answered truthfully. The old man immediately scolded him. This is not something for the human world. It exists for resisting the severe cold in winter. And to protect people in the world, the old man then told him, 
There is a doll named Hu Yiyang in Jinmo. May you say hello to him. Instantly, the old man disappeared. The man was very surprised, so he sat on a bamboo rod to return. On his way back, a strong wind suddenly rose, and that strong wind didn't stop until all the flowers he had picked were blown away. Later, the man went to visit Hu Yiyang and told him what he had seen and heard. Hu Yiyang told him, "That man is Qi Shu, from the Three Kingdoms period. He has been living in seclusion in Guzheng for a long time. Also, in Yong An notes of Qing Dynasty, another such a personal experience is recorded. The man recalled." Mr. Gu Hongshan was my grandfather's younger brother. I was six years old, and he taught me how to read. He was more than eighty years old at that time. He told me that when he was about my age, he studied in Yao Wang Temple in Wuxi City. There were more than ten Daoist priests at the temple. One day, a Daoist from outside came. And I asked her to stay for a while. This doist had an ancient mind, an ancient appearance. It seemed he knew everything of the past and present. He especially liked to talk about the things that had happened during the Three Kingdoms period, stories that were really touching and brought people to tears. The events he told were not recorded in history. When people asked his name. He smiled and did not answer. A few months later, a young boy suddenly fell ill and passed out. The boys from outside asked people to collect three hundred pounds of mulberry leaves, put them in a large pot to boil, and pour the brew to the mouth of the young boy. Soon, the young boy opened his eyes. Not long after, he had fully recovered. Soon afterwards, the doys from outside came to say goodbye to the old doys of the temple, who felt that the doys from outside was one with great cultivation accomplishments. So he tried to keep him at the temple, but the doys from outside refused. At last, he told the old doys, "To tell you the truth, I am a shishu." This young doys was a military officer in Liu Bei's army. I helped him for his merit on the battlefield of Fancheng. That's why I'm here. He left soon after he had finished his words. The old doys realized that the doys from outside was an immortal, so he hurriedly chased after him. But the doys from outside had already disappeared. And there's another case at the end of Qianlong period of Qing Dynasty, a wandering doys. Suddenly came to a village in Guangdong. The doys was dressed in rags and begged for alms from the villagers, except an old woman who gave a bowl of rice. No one was willing to give him anything. The doys sadly sighed and said, "I want to save the people in this village, but it seems that God's arrangement is hard to change." Although the villagers did not give alms. They all believed in God. As soon as they heard what the doys had said, they began to pay attention to him. So they all came and surrounded him. The doys spit out the rice he had just eaten, put it on the big rock, and said to everyone, "This year there will be a severe epidemic, and many people will die. Anyone who can pick up a grain of rice and eat it will be saved." The villagers believed him. They grabbed the rice grains and ate them immediately. One villager asked Doi's name, and he answered Shi Shu, and left. Soon the plague broke out in the local area, and many people died. But everyone who had eaten the rice was saved. There are still more deeds of Shi Shu's practice of Doism and his immortality. What makes people wonder? Is why Xu Shu has left legends of saving people in many places during more than a thousand years.
Is this coincidence? Are people invariably making up? It seems impossible. The only possibility to explain all this is that Shi Shu has indeed become immortal. As a matter of fact, during the dynasties in China, there were many people who practiced Taoism and became mortals. It can be said that where there is well, there is a way. Thank you very much for listening to the story. More touching stories will be ready for you if you just subscribe it. Thank you again.